With urbanisation, uh, the grasslands have actually become a rare habitat in Singapore. So we introduced the grasslands to create or provide habitats for small birds uh, to actually take shelter uh, within the grasses, amongst the grasses, and also to feed on the grass seeds of the grasses. Hi, I'm Katini and I'm currently the uh, Group Director for Park Development and Jurong Lake Gardens. So for Park Development, I oversee the development of parks and park connectors within Singapore. And for uh, Jurong Lake Gardens, I also see the ongoing redevelopment. And at the same time, I oversee the running, the day-to-day -day running and management of the gardens. And that includes uh, programming of uh, events and activities, as well as uh, looking into adopting, embracing uh, various technologies innovations uh, for, for the garden to be a test bed, to be a model for sustainable development and operations. The opportunity for me to work in the plant nursery actually developed my passion for plants. I was very motivated and I was actively looking, sourcing for plants and was actually um, trying to push out these plants that I sourced to my colleagues in NPARKS and subsequently pushing it out to the community through publications that we initiated like the 1001 plants in Singapore as well as the online uh, floral web. Uh, the aim is really to enhance awareness on the diversity of plants that we have in Singapore. For Jurong Lake Gardens, I think one of the unique things is that it involves extensive citizen engagement. So we, we actually came out with the design that is focusing on uh, nature, play and the community for Lakeside Garden. And that uh, is actually distilled from more than 17,000 feedback and suggestions that we received out of the engagement sessions that we had with the community. Secondly, uh, we wanted to uh, restore nature to the garden. Jurong was actually dominated with freshwater swamp forest species and that was gone because of urbanisation and uh, industrialisation. So we wanted to bring that back into the garden as well as uh, other habitats to enhance biodiversity. Then of course, we also wanted to preserve uh, people's memory of the place. People had fond memories of the place, of the lake setting amidst a Japanese and Chinese uh, garden, the greenery, the tranquility. So we wanted to make sure that some of these uh, elements are being preserved in the new garden. Then at the same time, we wanted to also integrate uh, nature uh, with science. For example, we introduced uh, nature-based solutions as well as the use of sustainable materials to enhance efficiency as well as reduce carbon footprint and energy. Last but not least, we also wanted to inject vibrancy. So therefore, active programming is very key. So all these are the parameters that we lay for the garden so that it will fulfil our objectives, our important objectives of creating a people's garden. In doing the garden, we started off with a green base layer, a green base canopy, and then we incorporated pockets of activity spaces within that green canopy layer for people to play, for the community to come together. This grassland here at Jerome Lake Gardens, it has become one of the most accessible grasslands in Singapore where visitors uh, and nature enthusiasts can actually find birds uh, like the zitting, sissy cola and the barbed button quail uh, which are typically found only in grasslands habitats. We actually have a variety of wildlife that also includes uh, more than 200 species of birds. One interesting thing that I would like to share is that when we first opened Lakeside Garden in 2019, we received a national record of 1 million visitors in just two weeks after opening the garden. So I think that shows the impact that such a project has on Singaporeans. And uh, to date, we have received close to 20 million visitors. So I would say that Jurong Lake Gardens actually exemplifies our City in Nature vision. So the garden itself incorporates strategies like uh, enhancing greenery, uh, restoring nature, and it also forms part of the uh, important ecological corridor in the West. 
So the project involves extensive uh, citizen engagement and we also uh, strive to be a model for sustainable development and operations. So all this uh, puts uh, the project as a model uh, for others to replicate and adapt uh, to move us forward uh, to become a city in nature and it also augurs well for our greening journey. I really would like to appeal to Singaporeans to make full use of these precious green spaces that we have developed. To use, make full use of it as an effective outdoor classroom, to excite, uh, to promote not just nature appreciation, uh, but also in terms of etiquette, in terms of sharing of uh, nurturing. We must constantly put in effort, a conscious effort, to formulate strategies to conserve nature, biodiversity. But at the same time, we must recognise the need to balance the need for nature as well as development. So we have moved from a garden city to a city in a garden and now to a city in nature. So we have a unique Singapore brand of parks gardens and nature reserves. Okay, so this is despite uh, us being one of the most densely populated cities in the world and yet we can become one of the greenest cities in the world uh, with parks and gardens that are able to uh, meet the diverse needs of Singaporeans and well connected through park connectors, nature park network and nature ways and we have a goal uh, to make every household to allow every household in Singapore uh, to be within a 10-minute walk of a park or garden in 2030.